Hey there, folks. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've been busy. Well, now, I hope you guys had a lot of fun on Northdale. It was a good run, and I want to wish the team on Lights of Engines some good times and good luck. It doesn't get any easier, that's for sure. I'm sorry to say I can't come along, but I know you'll do fine. So, I guess you all have a lot of questions. Well, I'll get to the point. At this juncture, I may disclose that I am Nilth, Senior Game Master on Light's Hope. I have been for a year and a half. Until now, I was bound by the anonymity policy to refrain from disclosing my identity. This confession is also effectively my resignation from the team. Uh, Blizzard, before you sue me or something, I had nothing to do with owning the server, okay? I just helped the players out. Uh, answering tickets, killing bots, you know, that kind of thing. I didn't do any coding, operate the server in any way, distribute any clients, design any advertisements, or anything else like that. I simply have many thanks to give to the Nostalrius and Light's Hope teams, and even parts of the Elysium team, specifically the GMs. I had a lot of fun progressing through vanilla on your servers, Nostalrius PvP and Anathema, and I had even more fun helping other players enjoy the same progression on Lightbringer and Northdale. I want y'all to know that. And another thanks to Kronos for holding the torch between Nostalrius and Elysium. Don't think I forgot about you, but there's one particular project I call home. I'm surrounded by folks who acknowledge me as a hunter, who I've been able to help in a different form, and it's a pleasure to be a part of this community. I know there are other guilds out there as tight-knit and determined as mine were. I'm sorry about not putting out a hardcore rating tutorial or keybinds and UI or something, but listen, every time I got to help a hunter out with a griefer trying to despawn the rogue Thalar demons, or answer a question about why pets keep running away in tickets, I was helping hunters just like those in my hunter core and on YouTube. And every time I helped a raid get out of combat or fix that glitched boss in ZG, I knew I was helping guilds just like mine. I've always wanted to lend a hand. That's why I started doing tutorials and why I joined the team. I joined the Light's Hope staff to give back to the community that gave me so much. And I wanted to make that clear because some of my friends don't trust Light's Hope. <laughs> Doggo was selling gold, right? <laughs> well, look. I've been working with the fellow for a while now, and I don't monetize my vids, I don't have a Patreon or anything, alright? So it was about passion for the game for me. And I hope you guys can at least trust me when I assert that the Light's Hope team feels the same way. Doggo's changed. It was the GM team who discovered the scandal on Elysium. They're the ones who split off. I trained with the very best in detecting scandalous stuff, and I'm also a SIG bloodhound, special investigations. So, if there were anything awry, I would have seen it. As would the others who also feel as passionately as I do about the game, the server, and the community. I mean, hell, my vendetta with the gold sellers was personal. They robbed my guild of a tea booze when Elysium's non-GM staff sold our guildmaster's login details out. I know there are others who were robbed by them too. I feel your pain, and I'm happy to tell you that I've paid them back for all of you as best I could. Anyway, I say that because these good folks don't deserve the flack they got a lot of the time. Scythe, Adumbro, Link, Tordier, Blanket, Theodris, Brawlmu, Jethri, Thari, Indormi, Nightmare, Vale, Padu, Doggo, Mechablade, Riptus, Kamafu, everyone else on the GM team, the CMs, the devs, system ops, and leads, they worked their butts off, and I saw it always. So I hope I can vindicate them of some suspicion through this disclosure. I want to give them all my sincerest personal thanks for everything. Thanks to all those named and referenced. Thank you. Uh, I also want to apologize to the player base in case any erroneous bans dropped on you or someone you know. While we all take great caution while handling hammers, we're only human and we all make mistakes. I've always tried my best to correct what errors I've made and to make as few of them as I possibly can, as some of you know intimately. Still, I can only speak for myself. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The goal is always to assist the player base, first and foremost. If innocent folks are hit with hammers, it defeats the entire purpose of what we're trying to do, or what we were trying to do. It's of utmost importance for many reasons, but for that reason in particular, that bans were handled carefully and mistakes were promptly corrected. 
And even if you do maintain suspicions of malice or deceit, we're all very happy to pass the torch on to its rightful holder, Blizzard, at long last. So, you won't have to worry about us anymore anyway. Now, that's all I wanted to get off my chest about the GMing thing. If you want to pause or close out of the video right now, you won't miss anything pertaining to that. However, uh, there is more I want to get off my chest on a more personal note, if you'd kindly stay a while and listen. While the GMing has been part of the reason I've been so absent, there's more that kept me from even that at times. A lot of the time, in fact. The truth is, I'm actually quite sick. Not terminally, mind you, but death is not the only consideration in sickness. You see, my brain doesn't properly process tactile sensations. In other words, my sense of touch is out of whack, and I'm quite often in pain taking actions that shouldn't actually hurt. It is very difficult to move my body, and also very difficult to think straight. I don't admit this for the sake of pity. I believe that pity is best reserved for your enemies, or for the weak and helpless. It's counteractive to development and growth. Everyone has grievances of some sort, mine are nothing out of the ordinary. Rather, I wish to be transparent about this in order to explain my next course of action for this channel, especially considering my previous statements about monetization. Some of you guys out there have expressed wanting to support me, and I can't tell you how appreciative I am of that. And until now, I've done this purely as a hobby. I have been able to get by without capitalizing on this channel, I have not monetized videos, or maintained a Patreon. That will need to change. Thus, it would mean everything to me if you would even consider supporting me through the Patreon link I will include in future videos descriptions, future videos for the sake of your consideration in the interim. I don't wish to enable impulsivity, you see. If I earn your support, if I prove helpful, entertaining, or fun company, then I will happily accept it. Thank you for understanding. As for what content I'll be putting out, well, um, assuming Blizzard even allows me to play on official servers after what I've done, I have been getting requests to do a leveling up series without all the fancy editing. Perhaps that would be helpful or fun. And did you know that I've always wanted to do a normal Let's Play? We live in a truly remarkable time when information is more readily accessible than ever. Only recently, relatively speaking, did we get movies and video games. Now more than ever, we can bring stories to life. Never take these unique privileges for granted. There is fun to be had in life, no matter how bad things are. And things have been awfully crazy recently. There seems to be a lot of polarization in politics, and people are more frenzied than ever about little things that shouldn't really matter. So, what I'd like to do is inject some joy and sanity back into the world by doing something simple and clean. I'd like to branch out. I'd like to do some normal Let's Plays so we can experience a story together. Maybe that story is old news, you've heard it before, or maybe it's new to you. But remember, it's different if we go through it together. It's less about the content and more about the personality, you know? Hang out with me, we'll have some fun even if it ain't something you've heard of. You know how Markiplier did Emma's story and Amnesia custom story and it was great because it had some fantastic mannequin sequences? He's terrified of those, you know. Well, it has a sequel and he, he never played through that. I'd love to see that story to its conclusion. Amnesia's a classic. And it even got a relatively recent update with hard mode, so interest may be renewed in some way. I remember Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth, quite fondly. It's really cheesy at times, but it's so atmospheric and memorable. Cryotic played through that game, but he ran into a lot more trouble with game crashes than I ever dealt with. Dead Space, another oldie but a goodie. Uh, I have so much to commentate on how that game was so much better than I thought it would be, and just how good it actually is, although the Act Man summarized it quite well. I'd love to go through some mods too. SPV 3.2 came out recently, it's a single player mod in development for a while that adds a lot to Halo 1, Combat Evolve. Uh, lots to admire about a mod like that. I've also got my own campaign for Dune 2000, old RTS game but pretty intense, and based in a neat universe. A friend of mine recommended some very good games and stories to me recently. Ever heard of Transistor or Disgaea? The former is short but sweet, and the latter is longer, but damn it punches you in the gut in a few places. Some really touching moments. Or maybe I'm just a softy. Either way, it's that sort of emotion that life's all about. And speaking of the meaning of life, how about a run through Nier Automata? Game of the Yorha edition came out in February. 
and I really want to support Yoko Taro. He makes some really good characters to have a good cry over when he inevitably screws them over during the story somehow. Anyway, uh, I was talking with Cargaz recently and chipped into his comprehensive guide on hunters. If you haven't checked him out yet, check the description. He's very humble. He describes himself as a mere talking head, but mate, if you're listening, let me tell you, the passion you show for what you do, gathering and arranging all that information, and the drive you demonstrate in making guide after guide is wholly admirable. If I could emulate a fraction of your dedication, I would be confident in my own success. I mean that. And hey, if you or Countdown to Classic want to talk about what being a GM was like, hit me up again. This is that big secret I was talking about many months ago. I'm not sure I should disclose all the secrets for the sake of other projects, including Blizzard's own official classic, but there is a lot to talk about anyway. Cargaz encouraged me to do more with my channel, so another friend of mine and I were discussing release schedules, and I liked the idea of a day for this or that. FPS day, RPG day, RTS day, horror day, you know. I'm not sure I could manage something every day, but a couple of short vids a week, 10 or 15 minutes, not counting cutscenes. That seems plausible. Uh, what do you guys think? I know it would be dramatically different, but dramatically different is something I kinda need to do. I will do what I can to get this ball rolling as soon as possible, but I'm not quite done setting everything up. On top of everything that's been going on, I've been set back by multiple hardware failures in only the last three months, which has stunted my ability to gather and prepare footage for lots of releases right away. But stay tuned, I am not one to quit. Oh, uh, yeah, and one more thing. Some folks have been asking about releasing the Darkshore project. I couldn't find anything on the mangoes being illegal to share, so I've placed that in the description too. You can't play it without a client, which is illegal to share, so you're on your own in that regard. If you do happen to happen across one, check the readme for more details. And if I am mistaken about the mangoes being illegal to share, someone please let me know and I'll take it down. Also, just for emphasis, this project has absolutely no affiliation with Blizzard Entertainment whatsoever. The project was built on the Light's Hope Repack, which contains only the Mangos, which was also built from scratch by players also unaffiliated with Blizzard Entertainment and modified by yours truly. It's a single player mod packed up and ready to go. The README has more details, but I want to say I added target dummies, streamlined the questing, added alternative pets and ranged weapons, a little bit more lore about Dark Room Mythic itself, uh, you don't need to do any fishing quests. Some off-duty Hayway Sentinels sell the fishing quest items. Uh, and before you ask, if you can't see the item stats and whatnot properly, you need to exit completely out of your client and delete your WDB folder. That's the game cache that stores old item data, among other things, and it needs to be refreshed for things to work properly. Just delete the whole folder. Oh, uh, and I also included my add-ons and UI in the zip since people have been requesting it. I hope it helps you out. Anyway, I think that about wraps it up for this update. Say hi in the comments and I'll wave back at you whenever I can. See ya!